Dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen, I know it's been a few weeks since we've had the last press conference, and there have been lots of development regarding COVID-19. It's been over eight months since the first cases were announced. And over the last eight months, unfortunately, worldwide, the cases exceeded 26,181,000. And the number of those who lost their, their lives for this disease alone exceeded 872,000 worldwide. And the numbers, unfortunately, are escalating, are increasing. In the Sultanate of Oman, since the beginning of the first case, which was 24th of February, it's a day that I don't think any of us will uh, forget, unfortunately. Uh, we've had so far 86,380 cases up till this morning. And luckily, those who recovered completely is more than 94%, 81,828 cases. 705 people lost their life, unfortunately, for this virus. Today, the number of inpatients in all healthcare facilities in Oman, 383. Those who are in intensive care units are 144. Our numbers started to come down since the mid of July. And the reasons for that, the uh, cooperation of almost everybody, I wish I could say everybody, and following the guidelines that are prepared by the healthcare teams and approved by the Supreme Committee, who's working round the clock. We realize in the Supreme Committee and at the Ministry of Health that it's been eight months and people everywhere are getting tired, frustrated, fed up with this virus and this disease. And everybody wants to go back to normal. Going back to normal, unfortunately, is not feasible in the near future. But going back to semi-normal and resuming activities is possible. It's possible if all of us did what we can do to prevent further spread of this virus. We've started several months ago easing the restrictions on businesses, uh, activities, work in places. This is done gradually and cautiously. But we are worried that unless everybody keep the physical distance, wear the mask when appropriate and also wear it appropriately, continue the hand hygiene, continue the respiratory etiquette, coughing and sneezing if you don't have tissues in the elbows, this virus would love to spread to more people, and it can do if we don't do the above. Avoid the, th the three C's, as WHO always keeps saying. Crowded places, closed places, close contacts. Avoid these three, and you will help us to compact this virus. There is, of course, a news about vaccines, and everybody is eager to hear what's happening and where are we. I wish I could have a date or an answer. But the good news is that there have been lots of cooperation internationally. And uh, the, over 150, 60 companies are in the process of making vaccines. How many of them will reach the market at we, nobody knows, but at least we know nine, nine of them are in stage three or level three of clinical trials. Usually, making a vaccine takes at least eight to ten years. But with this virus, and thanks to all the scientists worldwide who worked together, collaborated, uh, and also because this virus, uh, it's from a group which we had the first pandemic or SARS, COVID-1, SARS in 2003, and then MERS in 2013. So the, the companies were already in the process of trying to, vi to find a vaccine. What I'd like to assure you that we already committed to the COFAX, which is uh, 
an international, uh, basically, organization, part of WHO, which will provide and aims to provide and distribute not only vaccines, vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostic, uh, in a fair way to the international community. There were over 175 countries already members or part of this coalition, and Oman is one of them, and we did already reserve uh, what, we, what was allowed to buy through COVAX. And most, uh, I mean, the good news, the European Union as a collective entity, uh, two days or three days ago, they committed with 340 million euros toward COVAX, and each country, of course, uh, will decide separately whether they'll go and buy through COFAX or directly from the companies. So that's part one. COFAX, we are members. But the other issue also, we've contacted the companies which are leading uh, in the process of clinical trials. And uh, we are promised by all of them that we've contacted. And I'm grateful to the ambassadors of these countries and to, to the CEO and chairmen of the boards of these companies, whom I spoke to, many of them personally, for promising us that Oman will be given priority as well. And Oman, as any country, uh, and as part of the international community, we are definitely supporting the fair, equal distribution of therapeutics, diagnostics, and vaccine to all countries, regardless of their income. Nobody is safe from this virus until all of us are safe. No country can live in isolation and close its borders forever. If this virus continues to be in any country, it can go to all countries. So that's regarding vaccines. I would like to briefly just direct my talks to the younger generation. You are the future of all countries and societies. You've got the capacity, you've got the knowledge, you've got the IT, you, you are the experts. Social media. There's unfortunately lots of misinformation regarding this virus and other health issues. Please help us to discontinue the misinformation and spread the right information. Be part of the team which you've been in directing your effort to protect yourselves, protect your families, and protect the community from this disease. I know there is a feeling with the younger population that I'm fit and healthy, so what if I get this virus? I'll stay two weeks at home, then I'll go back to my normal activities. And again, the Supreme Committee myself, all of us, aware how frustrated you are, aware how boring life can be for somebody young to be staying at home, no activities, but hopefully this is temporary. And I hope none of you have this feeling or this belief that I'll get the virus and it's over. There are younger people who lost their life to this virus. Unfortunately, there is fertility also. There is death in children in many countries to this virus. We don't know the long-term effect of this virus in the younger population. We know that we had cases of diabetes triggered by COVID-19 disease. We had five cases so far in Oman. None of you wants to get diabetes, I hope. That's one issue. The other issue, yes, you are fit and healthy and your symptoms might be mild. But remember, you'll go home where you have elderly people, you have relatives with chronic diseases, you go to work in places, or you go to shops where there are people you don't know their clinical, their, their, their health situation. You don't want to have that burden in your shoulder that you spread this disease to somebody who might end up in intensive care units somewhere, or God forbid, end up dead. I know you are very intelligent, and I know that you'll do what is right. And what's right is to help us to stop the spread of this disease. The healthcare professionals working around the clock to provide you with healthcare services. Some of them I've mentioned in Arabic, they have not seen their families for eight months. Some of them work for up to 12, 18 hours a day. 
wearing the mask, the face shield, all the protective equipment, which if we wear a mask for a couple of hours, we grumble and we complain. So please think about them as well. The sooner we get rid of this virus, the sooner we'll go back to semi-normal. No, going back to normal will take, unfortunately, a long time. So I wish you all well, and I thank you for your cooperation again. And uh, this press conference will continue. And if you have any questions that have not been answered uh, through the brief statement I say or trans lost in translation in Arabic, please you can contact the ministry as well. Uh, I have a department, a department of International Relations, but they can work with the Department of uh, Public Relations and uh, uh, Media or information, and they will provide you with answers. I've got all my team, Dr. Saif, Dr. Hamid, and the rest of them who are very fluent in English. And we've got also the information in about five or six different languages in Trusted Plus. So we're here to serve everybody, to help everybody, but this is a collective responsibility. This is not a work of a government or a health sector or a private sector. It's everybody, every individual, every person is responsible. Every person can help either to make life easier and better for all of us or unfortunately spread the disease and make it more difficult. Thank you very much again.